James has to choose between adopting terror, death row game show, channel 13. Which one do you like? Which one do you like? Ooh. You can't influence him. Oh, you can't choose two. No, you can't. Well, not in your mouth. Not in your mouth. Now it's between those two then. All right. In these two. Which one? You, pick, you can't pick both. Oh, oh, Death Row Game Show it is! <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not for eating, buddy. Welcome to another. Whoa! The thing's coming after us! 31 Days of Horror 2019 video. James has chosen Death Row Game Show. I'm a gypsy. This is on purpose. It's for Halloween. <laughs> it is! Alright, what do you think? Mm. It has potential, except then I saw who did it. They didn't do it, they're just a distributor. Whatever, they were, did something with it, and so it's going to be a lot of boobs, I think. <laughs> so because Vinegar Syndrome released it, you figure it's all nudity all the time. Yep. All right. I'm predicting awesome things from this one. It, It's like, you know, got a little bit of death race going on. It's got a little bit of um, running man. I mean, I keep going. There's a ton of movies that are similar, you know, people fighting for their lives on a game show. Um, so, yeah. I guess it'll all depend on how good the games are. That'll probably be what sells it for me. That and the acting. If it's anything like this cover, it's not going to be good. I like this cover. Look at they're not drawn properly. It's just well, listen, that's how that guy does his artwork. It's not the original artwork, it's a special artwork for this release. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm pleasantly hopeful. I think it's gonna suck. And she thinks it's gonna suck. And we'll let you know what we really think right after we watch it. Keep watching. Hello and welcome to another 31 Days of Horror 2019 video. This video is coming well after the fact because um, the film we're going over today, I had a hard time including in the third 31 Days of Horror simply because, honestly, when I finished watching it, um, I immediately went, ah, oh, that sucks, I can't include this movie. And Leslie was like, why? And I was like, because it's, it's clearly a comedy. And she's like, but somebody got their head torn off, you know, like got decapitated. And I was like, yeah, but it it, it wasn't, it, it's not a horror movie. It's it's, it's clearly a, like a comedy spoof thing. And I was like, let me check IMDb. Maybe it listed as a horror movie as, as well. No, it's just strictly listed as comedy. And I hummed and hawed about it for quite a while. And the film I'm talking about is Death Row Game Show. And, uh, yeah, I, I hummed and hawed and I, and I, and I went over it over and over and over it. And, and I'm including it not because I need it to make up my 31 for 30, you know, the 31 days. I actually have 32 this, you know, for 2019. So technically I don't need to include it, but I am including it with, you know, asterisks, quotation marks or anything. This is 90% comedy and maybe 10% horror in the sense. Um, and I have a very, very broad spectrum of what I include in terms of horror. Um, but I thought about it and I was like, this is very much like a trauma movie. And while there are some trauma films that aren't horror at all, um, there are films that are very much comedy-esque, you know, Toxic Avengers, Sergeant Kabuki Man and such. Um, that play more towards the comedy than um, 
perhaps anything else, and yet we still kind of include them in the horror genre or even exploitation. So, you know, it's just kind of on the edge sometimes, you know, uh, Surf Nazis Must Die or Class of Newcomb High kind of on that edge, right? They're not really horror, horror films, but because they include some splatter or some gore or some, you know, killings and such like that, we kind of, we nudge them in there. Um, and yet they are very much slapstick, uh, splatter type comedies, um, mainly when you think about them. Um, a lot of, a lot of poop and fart joke type humor, right? Like <laughs> very lowbrow humor. Well, Death Row Game Show is like that. This film definitely plays out uh similar to things like um shoot now i'm not even gonna remember the film um i'm trying to think uh it's a game show where people are going we're running man um definitely very much along those lines because this is supposed to be also convicts um death race um convicts you know kind of uh in a game show for their lives type thing, um, to a certain degree, Hunger Games, um, yeah, this isn't necessarily post-apocalyptic, but it is sort of like an alternate future type thing, um, Slashers is another one where, you know, you're, you're kind of on a game show and uh, you can die in it and all that kind of stuff, so all of these films, some are more directly horror related some are more action oriented some more you know sci-fi you know they, they they meld a lot of genres and the more i thought about it i was like oh if i think this one is horror and i think that one is horror and i think that one is fits into the horror then maybe maybe i can you know death row game show should should go in there even though it is mostly comedy it is mostly slapstick it is mostly sex joke type things right um less about the killings and more about the other thing but there are killings so, what is what is this 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 movie about? Well, it's about um, a death row game show. This is these are uh, inmates who are on death row. Who, if they win the game show, they 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 are no longer gonna die on death row. But the alternate, you know, alternative is it's death row, and you if you don't win, you die. So. Do you have anything to lose? Not really. You're going to die either way, but hey, now you have a chance to save yourself. Um, and of course, it's got a. The big character on this is Chuck Toden's. Uh, Toden, who is like. Um, he's the, the smarmy game show host, right? So um, he's played by John McCafferty, um, who really, I think. <laughs> this probably was most of his what, it, what you know what he was in he wasn't in a lot um that you would know um i don't was this this wasn't his first film was it no so he did a bunch of stuff but where he's <laughs> Oddly enough, where he's going to be known for, and he did a long stint on this show, is Texas. The ninth, early 1980s television show Texas, where he played Billy Joe Wright. Um, but he was also in things like uh, A Polish Vampire in Burbank, uh, Curse of the Queer Wolf, um, uh, Nudist Colony of the Dead, right? So he didn't really... <laughs> it's funny that he... He, he had a a long you know a long stint on an actual show and then ended up still going back to I don't know maybe he had friends or something I maybe he just needed some some extra money and he made a lot of money on Texas I don't know but he was also in Sweet Evil and Witchcraft Seven um, and a whole bunch of you know TNA movie type things um, yeah a lot of sex type stuff. Um, but uh, he was even working up until uh, recently where he played in Rage of Innocence in 2014 and then Frozen Tundra in 2018, both of which I think are horror-related films. So that's interesting. The film itself is directed and written by Mark Pirro. Now, Mark Pirro really didn't make much of a name for himself. Um, 
he directed also he also directed a Polish vampire in Burbank. I wonder if there's any maybe this is why these people came back together. He also directed in two, 2014 Rage of Innocence. Hmm. <laughs> it's interesting how that goes. Um, but he also tends to put himself as, you know, background character or somebody in the films that he's in. So he's also played in films like Retarded Dead, Retard Dead, and Wreck Tuma, and Monster Turd, as well as Curse of the Queer Wolf. So he was also he also played a small role in Death Row Game Show. So this is one of those director, writer people who likes to throw himself in there. Maybe because of budget reasons, maybe because of friends, you know, needing somebody and you get him on the phone and he shows up. I don't know. I don't, not going to really, I, if you, I'd have to do interviews with these people to really find that kind of information out. But in this film, um, because of the nature and the controversial nature of it, Chuck Toyden, the game show host, ha gets a lot of death threats, right? And a lot of family members, you know, they're they're kind of thinking, hmm, there's something suspicious going on. Why, you know, like, how is it that these people are just dying, even though they get so close to winning and stuff? Um, and so one family uh, decides to hire a, um, like a private eye type thing. I think it was a private eye. No, it was a hitman. It was they hired a hitman. Yeah, it's been it's been a while since I actually watched it. They hired a hitman. So we've got Robin uh, Blythe played by Gloria. Uh, no, Robin Blythe playing Gloria Stern Virgin. Get the last name. It's it's there for a reason. There's a plenty of jokes about it. Um, who didn't really do much. Uh, outside of this this film, uh, oddly enough, um, she had nine episodes in the Brady Bunch Variety Hour. Um, played a couple of small things in Alice Cooper videos, um, and then yeah, Gloria Stern Virgin returns. Yes, the character returns in Wreck Tuma. So I'll have to track down Wreck Tuma just to watch it. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so Robin's going around. She's trying to find stuff out, and she. We've got this hired hitman, Bino. Yeah, he's like an Italian. He's he's, he's super Italian stereotype, pay, or. It's played by Bino. It's Luigi Papalardo. Is this this hitman? I keep getting these things. I got to write these things in the right order. Um, who has been in Nudity Required, if that tells you anything. Time Burst, The Final Alliance, Dilemma, and House of the Wolfman, among other things. Again, a lot of low-budget type stuff. But yeah, it's essentially these people and, and, and this game show host. And then, of course, there's contestants and other family members and such. and Just random people who show up in the film and either get killed or something... But it's it's mainly about this hitman and trying to you know kill the the game show host because of of this this family not being too cool with what happened, um, and I won't get into it too much after that because you know don't want to ruin what what they find out and what what's happening, um, but yeah, um, it's it's very very low budget trauma esque style. Um, it's it's one of the I don't know what would you say the the, the film uh, I laughed I'm not gonna say I didn't laugh but I probably didn't laugh as much as I was supposed to <laughs> if that if that means anything um, And, uh, stupid. Um, and that being said, the, the kills and such weren't overly spectacular. <laughs> um, like I said, the decapitation, I think, you know, Immolation, electrocution, that kind of stuff is happening. Uh, nothing overly gory. I think they could have ramped up the gore 
uh, considerably um, and probably would have made this a lot easier for me. Um, uh, but yeah, it does, it does, the film borrows a lot of things from like RoboCop and uh, The Running Man and uh, I don't know, it, there are a lot better films with very similar type ideas and premises, um, be it low budget, large budget, all over the budget. But I think for the most part, most of those films played up kind of straight. They're not comedies, right? Whereas this is a comedy. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people sort of lose it because, like I said, with The Running Man, right? It's big, super budget, big stars. Um, and while I think think some of the, the sets and stuff are a little... Uh, could have used a little bit more money on set sometimes in that film. Um it, 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 it does play out uh, really, really well, and it doesn't take weird tangents so much. It's straightforward and plays the action and, and does it. Um, whereas this one, it, it does take a little side journey here and there, um, mostly to, to try and get another joke in or something like that. Um, and, of course, being low-budget, the sets are even, you know, they're way down, played way down. Um but they, the story itself isn't terrible. Um, it's actually a lot better than I, I probably would have expected if I knew more about this film going in. Um, but at the same time, it, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty bad. Um, the acting is terrible. It is it well you, if you've seen a trauma movie, you know what I'm talking about. Picture a trauma movie like picture the Running Man. And, and slashers and all these kind of films rolled into one done by trauma. That's what this is. Um, I don't think it's a trauma film. As far as I know. But, um, yeah. It, 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 honestly, they went to the same school of filmmaking is, is all I can think of. Um, yeah, I, I don't... I don't remember if I saw this. Yeah, like here, I'll show you, give you a good idea of, of what the film is like. Is this alternate artwork or the original artwork on this Blu ray, right? Like that, that kind of tells you everything right there. Just the, the look, what is going on. I mean, even the look this guy who's about to get fried, you know, <laughs> it's kind of comical, right? So, uh, it's a lot of that kind of stuff. And some of it, um, well, a lot of it eh, doesn't play off very well. Um, but there are moments, again, I'm not the biggest comedy fan <laughs> um i don't find a lot of comedies actually funny so when i watch a film like this saying i didn't get a lot of comedy out of it that's not saying much right like yeah had i known if i had was in the mentality of a, for a trauma movie going into this maybe i would have been more you know in line with having a laugh or two um but i was i, I wanted a horror movie i wanted i wanted you know, them battling it out and, and trying to, you know, win to save themselves and or die. I want That's what I wanted the main feature of it, the film, to be about and really concentrate on that, really hone in on that and give great kills and stuff, and that's not really what it was. So I'm going to give it two and a half. Um, I'm not going to give it a recommend uh, unless you're into... If you're into trauma... If trauma films are your thing... This is definitely something you should check out. It's not a trauma film, but it's definitely on par with them. So it's, it's your flavor type thing. That's that's your your wheelhouse. Get in on this. Um, but trauma is not for everybody. It's not for most people. Um, and that being said, uh, I can't give a recommend to this. Um, but most of this rating is because this film really isn't what I was looking for. It really wasn't what I wanted out of it. Um, 
and I hoped for more, and I didn't get it. So it's more of a, I'm getting, I'm knocking off at least a half a point to maybe a, a full point because of disappointment. Um, now there are obviously technical, bad acting, bad directing, bad bad writing, and such like that uh, throughout the film. Um, so yeah, it, it it probably loses two points from that alone. So well, maybe it is right where it should be. I don't know. I I'm kind of, I'm trying to give it a a, a fair assessment. Not necessarily on my enjoyment of the film, but also in the technical aspect. And again, it's it's a 50-50, you know. It wasn't what I wanted, but at the same time, would I have liked it if it was? I don't know. Am I? There we go. I'm getting all fuzzied here. Um, but yeah, that's Death Row Game Show, kind of. I'm squeaking it into my 31 Days of Horror just simply because it's, uh, yeah... It, 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 don't think of it. Think of it as a comedy from Trauma, and you'll probably be okay. If you go into it thinking it's a horror or straight up horror movie from anywhere else, you're likely gonna end up like I am. <laughs> Anyways, let me know down below if you've seen the film. Do you consider it horror at all? That's more of the discussion we want to have rather than if you like the movie or not. Comment down below. Thanks for watching. Till next video. Take care. Have a good one.